Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I will discuss the IMO performance standard for the GPS. Remembering the performance standard of all the equipments is very important for the oral examination point of view, especially for second mates and chief mates. So to simplify it so that you can remember all these points during the oral examinations, think of it in a manner that you already have worked with the GPS and everything that you have observed is basically the performance standard. Let me go through the points and you'll know what I mean. The IMO performance standard says that a GPS must be capable of receiving GPS signal and provide information in latitude and longitude with the WGS84 coordinates. So this point is a no-brainer. A GPS must be able to receive a signal and give you the latitude and longitude at a widely accepted datum which is called the WGS84. Then it must be capable of operating on L1 signal and CA code. CA code is your course acquisition code made for the civilians. And if you know how a GPS works, you know that L1 signal and CA code is basically for all the civilian GPS. So if you are receiving only these signals, then your GPS must be able to operate on these signals. And this is the second point of the performance standard. Let's talk about the third one, which is about remembering a fact that a GPS must be able to acquire position within 30 minutes without the almanac data. And it must be able to acquire position within 5 minutes with the almanac data. Now you know that at sea, mostly your plotting interval is 60 minutes or 30 minutes. As per the IMO performance standard, even if the GPS does not receive the almanac data, it will be able to acquire a position within 30 minutes and if the almanac data is being received just 5 minutes is enough then next point is again another fact that let's say there is a signal interruption for 24 hours then the IMO performance standard says that a GPS must be able to reacquire position in 5 minutes when signal is interrupted for 24 hours and it must be able to reacquire position in 2 minutes if the power is lost for 60 seconds. So if the ship has been to dry dock and the system was off for more than 24 hours, then it will take about 5 minutes for the GPS to reacquire the signal. This is the IMO performance standard. And if the power is lost for just 60 seconds, like a blackout, in that case, it must be able to reacquire position in 2 minutes. And this makes perfect sense that after a blackout, we need the position immediately. And in case of a 24 hour signal interruption, we have time, so 5 minutes is provided. Then the next point says that at least one output based on WGS84 for other equipments. Now this we all have seen. The GPS position is interfaced to a lot of equipments like EGDES, radar, AIS, etc. But the performance standard requires that there must be at least one output based on WGS84 which can provide the data to the other equipments. Then the next point says position accuracy must be about 100 meters when the horizontal dilution of precision is equal to 4 or position dilution of precision is about 6 under the conditions of sea states and ship motion. Also we have observed now that the position accuracy is always less than 100 meters on board the GPS. Every time it exceeds 100 meters, there are alarms which goes off everywhere. So 100 meter is the position accuracy requirement. Although some of the equipments the setting may be less. Then the next point says, new position generated and output to display must be at least every one second. And also this we observed. The position refreshes very fast on GPS display. So thus, one second is the requirement. And most likely, on board our ships, what we have seen is much lesser than one second. Then the next point talks about the data that we receive from the GPS. So a GPS must be able to generate and output course over ground, speed over ground, and the UTC. And this is also another common observation that we receive these three datas from the GPS. Then the next point is that a GPS should have the facility to process DGPS. 
So of course, all our GPS are now mostly DGPS, receiving differential global positioning system, thus highly increasing the accuracy of position that we receive on the GPS. Then the next point says that it should provide indication when position calculated is likely to be outside requirement. And as I discussed earlier, whenever the position that is being received exceeds the requirements as per the IMO standard, you have often heard the alarms. Next point is that the GPS must have a minimum resolution of position that is latitude and longitude of 0 decimal 001 minutes. So the position displayed must be up to 3 decimal figure. And finally, one last point that a GPS must be capable of automatically selecting the appropriate satellite. So basically, we don't want manual selection of satellite. A GPS must know itself which all satellites will give the most accurate position. So finally, I summarize a GPS when you're talking about the IMO performance standards. All you have to think about is what you normally see on board. It is receiving position from the GPS. It is receiving two kinds of signals. It is giving your position in WGS84 format. It is capable of giving you a position at a certain interval of time with certain accuracy. The accuracy further improves with the DGPS signal. If you are not receiving the signal, then it must be able to give you an alarm and the position must be accurate up to three decimal figures. It must have at least one output based WGS84 for other equipments. Position accuracy of 100 meters, 10 meters if DGPS signal is received. It must generate an output signal of course over ground, speed over ground and UTC. New position to be generated every one second. And finally, if it's not working, it must be able to give you a signal. I hope this was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment, then please do write down below. All the best for your exams and as always, thank you for watching.